chapter that we have when we talk about the prophets and the messengers of Allah. So this is the, and I, I, I'm pretty sure that the, on YouTube channel, the YouTube channel of the Masjid, mashallah, when the people will, inshallah, maybe the next generation, we don't know, that they will come to look at these sessions uh, and they will surprisingly, they will come to the chapter number 21 and they will find just 10 or more, we don't know, 10 or more lectures just about this surah, they will say why that Imam stopped here. And the reason for that is because we wanted to have collective lectures and a series of lectures about the prophets and the messengers of Allah. That's why this surah, it is called not surah to Nabi, not the prophet, but it is called surah to Al-Anbiya, the prophets, the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why it is taking too long. So inshallah, the main idea that we need to know a little bit more about each and every prophet. And I'm, alhamdulillah, we are getting closer to 800 lectures just recorded on YouTube. So alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, that is with average of more than 500 hours on YouTube, alhamdulillah, since we started in 2018, February 2018. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the benefit from this knowledge, Allah ma'ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors for his guidance, Allah ma'ameen, and grant us goodness in the dunya and the hereafter, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Let's continue because the time is so tight. And uh, uh, do not forget about tomorrow, inshallah, we are preparing for the second khutbah for how to build a, a strong Muslim community. We will give the first ingredient after the introduction last Jumu'ah. So that will be, inshallah, so powerful, inshallah, khutbah. May Allah open our doors for the guidance, Allah ma'ameen. I'm so excited for preparing and uh, today with, with preparing the, some of the materials and and uh, reading some of the, the discussions between the scholars and because, you know, you know, it takes time. You, you might eat the, the meal within uh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, but to be ready in the kitchen, that might take longer. That's why we are now in the kitchen, inshallah, ready to give the meal tomorrow, inshallah, to introduce the meal hop, inshallah, that you enjoy the meal, inshallah, for tomorrow. And uh, tonight, we, we, we will talk about the rest of the story of Sayyidina Nuh. And uh, yesterday we talked about the tactics, the strategies that he used in delivering the da'wah. But you know what? In my point of view, in my very humble point of view, that we need to focus on what needs to be focused on. Because lots of people are paying attention to the details, which is not something relevant to the main idea, the main theme that we need to focus on. So if I told you, for example, what, what's the main idea yesterday that you wanted to get? To get the patience on delivering the da'wah. That's something great. To, to know about the tactics of the da'wah that you should do as a Muslim. And also you need to know that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had granted you wisdom and patience on, on delivering the da'wah, you need to be sure first that you have used all the tactics, all what is in your ability with your wife, with your children, with your friend, with your neighbor, with your colleague. You need to have that patience, especially with your own family. Sometimes if you tried once with your child, you, you give up, you fit up very quickly and say, you know what? They do not listen, they are not good, they are not obedient, and you are quickly judge them. Remember, Sayyiduna Nuh, he is calling not his own family, but he's calling even strangers, like his people, yes? But they are not his own family. And he had that patience that, lo that lasted for 950 years. So what about you? And subhanAllah, sometimes we are, underestimating ourselves. Like we, we belittle ourselves. We Muslims, when you look at the other communities, 
Subhanallah Rabbil Alameen that sometimes with a little bit, a little bit of improvement in their community, they keep pushing you and they keep like motivating you. They keep pushing you and, and they are supporting you. Subhanallah, nowadays or in our communities, no matter what you achieve, they always push you to get frustrated. No, 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 don't. The, those people do not even try with them. That community does not deserve you to do that, that effort. You know, th that's the problem. That's our problem. We, we started other, the others with a little bit of improvement. They are so happy. They are so happy with a little bit of improvement. And when you compare even the, the, the type of knowledge, it's almost nothing, nothing. SubhanAllah, uh, one of the achievements that I have read before for like some of the, I would not mention names today, but for some of the communities, they are non-Muslims. And subhanAllah, like they're, they're one of the, the, the achievements that they got somebody with the drums, you know, to play drums. And they started to dance in the church, in the place of worship. And they recorded that as one of the achievements. SubhanAllah, Ya Rabbil And uh, they, 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 they encourage that type of achievements. Okay, so someone to light up candles, some up, someone to 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 knock on on the drum, some someone to to play with the music, and that's achievement for them. Can you imagine? We as Muslims, we underestimate ourselves. We by ourselves, we belittle ourselves. So pay attention for that. Do not look at yourself that you are something insignificant. No, you are in the eyes of Allah, something huge, something big. You are big, you are something in the equation. You are the one who, who single Allah out with the worship. You are a Muslim, you, sh you should feel proud of your identity as a Muslim. May Allah grant us goodness, say Ameen. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. So Sayyidina Nuh came to the point after this long time, he said, خلاص, إنهم عصوني واتبعوا من لم يزده ماله وولده إلا خسارة ومكروا مكرا كبارا. The verses that we just recited in Surah Al, in Salat Al Maghrib. He said, oh Allah, they disobeyed me. They did not follow. And not only this, they started making plots against me. And they started to inherit the shirk. So sometimes, sometimes, Allah, you know, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what did he say? When the people of, uh, um, not Mecca, Ta'if, yes, when they plotted against them, he said to the, the, the angel of the mountain, maybe, maybe from their offspring, not this generation, the next generation. I'm asking Allah that he might grant me from their offspring, a generation might come and they will believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now you can see Taif and how Islam, mashallah, Rabbil Alameen. And this is the offspring and this is the outcome of the da'wah of Rasulullah. Sayyiduna Nuh, even that, he couldn't, he couldn't hope for that. He couldn't dream of that because the generations who came to Sayyiduna Nuh, one after one, they are worse than the previous one. They are more evil than the previous one. So he said, Wala yalidu illa fajiran kafara. Even those who will come, they will be worst. He fed up, he gave up. And that tells you about 950 years, that is not easy task. SubhanAllah, he had very difficult mission. And he said to Allah, oh Allah, they used to inherit the kufr. And by the way, the kufr oh, with, they, they are disbelieved, they disbelieved in Allah. And one of the, 
philosophical or like the the, the more the, the, the things or the issues, which is a little bit complicated. I don't know if you have time and have, you know, energy to receive that or not. Do you know, do you know that you, to be a believer, you have to be a disbeliever first? Do you know that? So that's alhamdulillah great. Let me give it very quickly. You are kafir and I am kafir. Do you know that? Yes. <laughs> Some people said, Imam, what are you saying? <laughs> Imam got crazy. Some, send him back to Egypt very quickly. <laughs> okay. To be a believer, you have at the, at the same time to be a disbeliever. Allah said in the Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah, فَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بِالطَّاغُوتِ وَيُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ إِسْتَمْسَكَ بِالْعُرْوَةِ الْوُثْقَى لَا انْفِصَامَ لَهَا وَاللَّهُ سَمِيعٌ عَلِيمٌ Whoever disbelieved in the shaytan, in the taghut, whoever disbelieved in, in, you know, other than Allah, that's why. لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ It has both. كُفْرْ and إِيمَان You say first, لَا إِلَهَ La ilaha, I do not believe at any God. There is no ilah, there is no God. That's la ilaha. That means you are a disbeliever. Here you are kafir. What's the difference between you and the atheist? If you said la ilaha, that's la ilaha. If you did not continue, you said la ilaha, there is no difference. No difference between you and the atheist. The same concept. So the atheist will say, La ilaha. So if, he, if an atheist heard you while you are saying La ilaha, he will shake hand and he will grant you. He will greet you and he will say congratulations. Now you are amongst our group. La ilaha. Then you say, Illallah. Oh, that's the Iman. That is the Iman. So the, the, the Kalima, of Tawheed has both Kufr and Iman. So to be Mu'min, like, like what, what's the word Kufr means? Kufr means I do not accept what you believe. So if you have a Christian next to you, do you believe that Jesus is God? So in his point of view, you are Kafir, right? You will not get the salvation and you will not be able to make it to Jannah unless you accept Jesus as God. So in his point of view, you are Kafir. So do not think, like, do not be sensitive to that term, like Kafir. I'm talking about uh, academic point of view. Academic point of view. Like, that would, like, we are not judging others like they are Kafir. We are talking here about our creed, our own belief. To, be, to, to believe in something, you have to disbelieve in something else. Like, if I told you, the moon is here. So that means what? The sun has to be somewhere else. Right? The sun is here. So the moon has to be, you cannot... Like bring both of them. Can I tell you, would you believe if I told you, you have a heart of a man and it has angel and shaitan in one place? Can they come together? No. Good and bad? White and black? Good and evil? No. So that means if you want it to believe in Allah, you have to disbelieve in something else. Like, subhanAllah, Rabbil Alameen. Sayyiduna Nuh, can you identify who had believed with him? Just those who believed in Allah and Nuh as a messenger of Allah. That's it. And Allah said in the Quran, وَمَا آمَنَ مَعَهُ إِلَّا قَلِيل. قَلِيل, just very few. Very little number. Very few number of them. Believed, the scholars said, the scholars said, the minimum 11, the maximum 82. 
as I told you yesterday, 82. That is the maximum in 950 years. And subhanallah, yesterday we made a comparison between the similarities between the Quran and the Bible and also the differences between the Quran and the Bible in the story of Nuh salam. But he came to the point that he gave up and he made a dua to Allah. And particularly, this is what Allah had just mentioned in Surah Al-Anbiya. He said, And Nuh, when he made a dua to Allah, then Allah immediately, you remember fa? فَاسْتَجَبْنَا Immediately Allah had answered his dua. And in Surah Al-Qamar, like I told you, Surah Nuh, Surah Hud, Surah Al-Anbiya, Surah Al-Qamar, if you wanted to read about the story of Nuh, read those four surahs. Al-Anbiya, Nuh, Hud, and Al-Qamar. In Surah Al-Qamar, he said, in Surah Al-Anbiya, Allah said he just made a dua, but Allah did not mention the dua. In Surah Al-Qamar, Allah mentioned the text. Which dua? You might answer, you might come and ask me, Imam, we know that he made a dua, but what exactly he said to Allah? Allah mentioned that in Surah Al-Qamar. Allah, he said, Rabbi inni fantasir. Oh Allah, now, they came against me. I ask you to grant me victory. That's his dua. Inni maghloobun fantasir. And amazingly, this ayah that I, I, I'm going to tell you, that's, that's a miracle from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah said, وَأُوحِيَ إِلَى نُوحِ أَنَّهُ لَيُؤْمِنَ مِنْ قَوْمِكَ إِلَّا مَنْ قَدْ آمَنْ You got this meaning, brother? Allah said, I revealed to Nuh that no one else, no one more person, no one, no, no one else is going to believe with you. That means I had sealed their hearts. After his dua, no more believers. And he is the prophet that Allah had told him to stop making da'wah. After he made the dua, Allah said, I gave them many chances and they used to put the tap of their fingers on their ears, cover up their heads. They plotted against him. They used to make fun of him. They used to call others not to follow his da'wah. Hundreds of years. And he tried everything with them. No one else is going to believe. You might say, Imam, is that means they, they were in, on their way to believe and Allah prevented them? No. Allah knows that they are not going to believe. And even after the dua, Allah, you know the, the verse, خَتَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ وَعَلَىٰ سَمْعِهِمْ وَعَلَىٰ أَبْصَارِهِمْ Allah had sealed. Allah had put the, the cover over their hearts. And why? how Allah said that? How Allah said that? Because you believe in Allah. ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِي هُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ Allah knows the unseen. He knows the unseen, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he said, no one else is going to believe. And he stopped the da'wah. And by the way, Allah at the same time gave him the order to make and to create the ark. But listen here, what's his mission? A prophet or a carpenter? Prophet. But now Allah had changed his career to be what? A carpenter. He, does he have any experience on that? No. That's why listen to the verse. Allah said, وَاصْنَعِ الْفُلْكَ بِأَعْيُنِنَا وَوَحْيِنَا And I order you to create an ark, to make an ark under my supervision and with my instruction. So who is going to teach him? Allah. 
Who is going to instruct him? Allah. Who is going to correct him if he did something wrong? Allah himself. So the teacher at that case, Allah, Allah is going to teach him. Think about this. And you can put yourself at the same shoes of Nuh. So why? Why should I build an ark in the midst of the desert and on the top of the mountain? So like Sayyidina Ibrahim, Allah had told him in the dream to slaughter his son. He didn't question Allah. He didn't say, oh Allah, why? He didn't. Sayyidina Nuh did not ask Allah. So what's the lesson here? Submission. Submission. Oh Allah, I believed in you as my creator and whatever you will tell me, I will obey no matter what. I will not even question you. And he started to make that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Al-Wah, that's in the Quran. I stick with the text of the Quran. Because we have some Israeliyat. Some of the narrations was like were mentioned in the Bible that and, and some of the fabricated narrations that he had only one tree. Then he came to Allah and he said, oh Allah, how can I build that huge ark with one tree? So he said, Allah, Allah said, do not worry, I, I, will do my, I will do my work. So when he cut the first tree and he prepared the pieces of wood to put it together, then when, when it finished, he went back and he saw that Allah had gave him another big tree at the moment. Then he cut it. Then he finished. Then he went back and he found another one. He could give him many trees and khalas and finish it quickly. But subhanAllah, this is the narration. But I'm, we stick with what mentioned in the Quran. Allah said, وَحَمَلْنَاهُ in, That's in Surah Al-Qamar. Allah said, وَحَمَلْنَاهُ عَلَى ذَاتِ أَلْوَاحٍ وَدُسُرٍ وَدُسُرٍ Allah. Allah, Allah said, we carried him and his people on the ark or the ship, which made of wood and dusur. You know dusur? Nails. So he used to put the, the sheets of wood next to each other and nail it. That is how he made the ark. When he finished the ark and while he is working, so Allah said, وَكُلَّنَا وَكُلَّ That's another pain. That's another pain, subhanAllah. Because sometimes words are hurting more than the, the physical head. So, وَكُلَّمَا Whenever the chiefs come to him, Allah said, مَلَا مِنْ قَوْمِ مَلَا means the leaders, the chefs. So the chiefs, when they have, whenever they go and come to him, they make fun of him. Oh, Noah, what happened to you? Now you stopped the da'wah. Now you started to work as a carpenter. Now you are najjar. What, what happened to you? Uh, you got crazy? And how are you going to, to move that ark from here to the coast? You should make it there, not on the top of the mountain. You are in a desert. And who, who taught you? Do you have some magic, magic here? Do you have some magic? Now you tried the da'wah with us and it didn't work. Now you changed your career? All these words. SubhanAllah Rabbil Alameen. So what's the lesson here? Huh? Yes? And sometimes when you work with da'wah, <laughs> you will get with some of crazy comments. You need to be patient. That's the, that's the only thing. That's the only thing. Do not lose your patience. Because when you, when you work, like this is the message of whom? That's the message of whom? Allah. Allah said in Surah Al-Jinn, وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ The masajid are belong to Allah. And everyone is working in the masjid like someone is managing, spending, taking care, 
cleaning, giving da'wah, whatever your, your mission in the masjid is. Subhanallah Rabbil Alameen. You are a servant of the house of Allah. What a great honor. You are not working with the government. No. You are working in the house of Allah, a servant of the house of Allah. If Allah chose you for that position, that means that he loves you. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. He loves you. Because you are not working with human beings. You are working in the house of Allah. That's a sign of his love. So you should, you should be grateful to Allah. That's number one. Number two, you should do your best in the house of Allah to serve the house of Allah on the best way. Number three, to be patient on getting any hit from, from anywhere. And remember, you, you, you remember the, the, the lady that you, she used to clean the masjid when she passed away and they buried her at night. They did not tell Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He got angry. The next day he got angry. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, why? And he went to her grave. He made a dua for her, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he spoke highly about her. She just used to clean the masjid. So if, if you connected yourself with the masjid with any how, wallahi, I know a person, he used to build and clean the members. The, the, the member the, where the, the imam stands on the day of Jum'ah. That's it. That's it. He used to, he was a specialist. You know the manabir in Egypt. Very high and designed very nicely and had, has the art in it. And it's, it's, a, it's a like great work, nice work that he used to do. And he used to, do, to donate that for the sake of Allah. Every message he goes, just make the member, clean it. And every two, three months, he used to come and clean and wipe it and polish it like nice way. And that man, he died on the day of Jumu'ah, during the khutbah of Jumu'ah. And he was leaning his back on the member that he made. Subhanallah, look at the good ending that Allah had granted him. Connect yourself somehow with the masjid. Like in your deeds, say, you know what? I do some, like I take food for the masjid. Clean the masjid. Like fix the lights of the masjid. Taking care of the speakers of the masjid. Bringing books and, and fixing the chairs of the masjid. Like put the masjid at the end, somehow. And let's see the barakah that Allah will put in your life. Subhanallah Rabbil Alameen. You know that the wife of Sayyidah Maryam, what's her intention when she got pregnant? No, 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 the mother of Maryam. Not daughter even. She said, in me, Rabbi inni nadartu laka ma fi batuni muharrara. Oh Allah, I wanted the baby in my, in my like womb to be only for your sake for the masjid. And why she got like sad? She a girl. a girl. She said, oh Allah, how she's going to serve your masjid? How she's going to lead the salah? How she's going to be mixed with the men when they come? I want a, I want, I want a boy. I wanted a boy to serve you, to come to your masjid. That's from the time of pregnancy, subhanAllah. And Maryam was a good servant for the house of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And became later on, later on, she became the mother of Sayyiduna Isa, one of the great and one of the my messengers of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And not only this, Allah said in the Quran, Ya Maryam, inna Allah astafaki wa tahharaki wa astafaki ala nisa al alameen. Allah never said that about any other woman on earth. Astafaki, chose him. Wa tahharaki, purified him. Wa astafaki, and he chose you over the rest of the women of the dunya. Subhanallah. Rasulullah Muhammad himself 
He said, Kamula min al Nisa'i Arba. Four women had perfected their religion. And the first one he chose, Maryam. Allahu Akbar. So just think about it. Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam, his family had the connection with Allah. That's why, that's why Allah saved them. Everyone had belief in Nuh alayhi salam. Allah had saved him. So Allah said, after building the ark, bring every, like, two of every animal, of every creature, male and female, and bring your family and those who believed with you. The maximum we said, 82. So I, I told you the Bible said he collected only his own family. They did not mention anything about those who believed with him. He put them all and Allah said, I will give you a sign. So you can, all of you, you can go and load them all inside the ark and try to ride the ark, try to be all in the ark and do not come out. He said, Hatta idha jaa amruna tannur. You know tannur, right? No. Who knows tannur? What they make bread? Not It's oven, okay? Like tandoori, you know tandoori? Okay, tandoori, okay. So, so the tanur, okay, nowadays we use the tanur in Jordan, in Syria, like the oven where you bake the, the, the bread, okay? It's the same one. But what mentioned in the Quran, you will find that the, the ground started to boil, the soil itself, and the water will come up, heat it. That is tanur. Something is boiling inside. Something is ready to explode. At that time, when you see that sign on the soil, on the ground, take them all inside the ark and just relax. Be ready for the journey. The journey that Allah will wipe out all the death believers on earth. He said the dua that is mentioned in Surah Nuh. Rabbi la tadhar ala al-ardi min al-kafirina dayyara. Oh Allah, destroy them all. I don't want even to leave one of the death believers on earth. Then at that time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him to be ready and the, the sun, the, the heavens, the skies started to give too much rain and the earth started to gush water from inside and the water will come out. So now you see the, the, the skies giving rain, heavy rain and the, 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 the ground or the, the earth will bring water and the scholar said, how long that rain stayed? Huh? How long? 40, mashallah, seven days. What else? They said 150 days. 150 days that continued and covered all the earth, all the earth. That means there is no human beings left except what is on the ark and even the animals. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed them all. I forgot to tell you something. And before the ark moves, subhanAllah, who taught, who taught Nuh to lead the ark? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he made the dua. This dua, we should have it. Most of us, we know other dua. We know other dua when you ride your car. What do you say? Subhanallah. Sakhara lana hadha wa ma kunna lahu mukrineen wa inna ila rabbina la munqalibun. Another dua, and it is also mentioned in the sunnah, by the way. What he said? He said, Bismillahi majareha wa mursah. In the name of Allah, it moves. In the name of Allah, it stops. That is, Allah mentioned this dua in Surah 
اهود سيدنا نوح said وقال اركبوا فيها الله said about نوح وقال اركبوا فيها he said to his people to those who with him just try it and be in in the ark بسم الله مجريها ومرساها and in the name of Allah it moves in the name of Allah it stops yes and 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 the sister mashallah asking about the wife of the prophet Noah she stayed behind she did not you know come and ride with him in the ark not only him and we said that he had two wives right the mother of Yafid, Ham, and Sam. And, and the mother of Yam did not come. She was amongst the disbelievers. And also Yam. And some of the narration said that he just, like, he used to appear and he used to show to his dad that he's okay. But when the, 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 the time of the truth came, he came and he told him, Ya Bunaya, Irkam Ma'ana, come with us. Wala takum ma'al kafirin. Do not be amongst them. He said, Sa'awi ila jabalin ya'simuni minal ma. I will climb up to the highest of the mountains, and that mountain will protect me from the water, from dying, drowning. So Subhanallah Rabbil Alameen. He said, La Asim al Yawma min Amrillah illa man rahim. No one is going to be saved from that flood. And he like died. And Subhanallah Rabbil Alameen. Look at the, the heart of the father. What tells you that Sayyiduna Nuh did not know about his son. He thought that he's amongst the believers or he thought that he has Iman. That's why he made the dua to Allah afterwards. He said, Rabbi, in, in Nabini Min Ahli, you told me that your family is going to be saved. And what about my son? In Nabini Min Ahli, he's one of my family members. You, you promised me that they will be saved. And whatever you decide, I agree. Then Allah told him the truth. Ya Nuh, innahu laysa min ahlik. He's not one of your family members. He was a hypocrite. He, he had something inside his heart. He disbelieved, but you didn't know. I know, because I'm the one who created him. I know, you did not know his reality. Subhanallah, Rabbil Alameen. Huh? Can'an. Yeah, that is that is in Judaism. They called him Can'an. And but Yam, that is his original name. That's even it's just a title, Can'an. And Can'an, that's the name of the tribe that they came from. Okay, that, that's a long story. But Allah said, Innahu laysa min ahlik, innahu amalun. In another like way of recitation, you know, we have seven narrations and in, a, in some ways, like 10 narrations of how to recite Quran. He did bad deeds. He did like unrighteously. Listen, listen to this. Allah said, do not ask me about the things that you do not know about. Inni a'idhuka an takuna min al I advise you not to be amongst the ignorant. Allah, that's how Allah is talking with Nuh alayhi salam. Do not ask me about the things that you do not know about. I know what he had in his, in his heart. And you saw the reality. When you called him to come with you, he said, no, I wouldn't come. What's the lesson here? Do you own the guidance? <laughs> Sometimes you try with your own son and he does not listen. So do not 
Do not think for a moment that you own the, the guidance. You just make a dua. Do your, do your best. Sayyiduna Muhammad couldn't get the guidance for his own uncle, Abu Talib. And Lut couldn't guide his own wife. Nuh couldn't guide the wife and the son. Ibrahim couldn't guide his own dad, couldn't guide his own dad. Subhanallah, ya Rabbil Alameen. That tells you, just make a dua and ask Allah for the guidance for them. Allah is the one who is guiding. And then after the 150 days, the ark had stopped and the flood had stopped. And then Allah gave the order to the, to the skies, to the earth. وَقِيلَ يَا أَرْضُ إِبْلَعِي مَا أَكِي وَيَا سَمَاءُ أَقْلِعِي وَغِيضَ الْمَاءِ وَقُضِيَ الْأَمْرِ وَاسْتَوَتْ عَلَى الْجُودِي وَقِيلَ بُعْدًا لِلْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ At that time, see how many orders? وَقِيلَ يَا أَرْضُ إِبْلَعِي مَا أَكِي Suck your water. Absorb your water. إِبْلَعِي مَا أَكِي وَيَا سَمَاءُ أَقْلِعِي Stop raining. وَغِيضَ الْمَاءِ the, mat, the water like went down. Like the command was fulfilled. The ark stopped on the top of the Judea mountain. So where the mountain of the Judea? Where it is now? So where it is? Turkey. Turkey. Yes, Turkey. So on the, the borders, some people said, and of course, like, like every, every country claiming that this is our Judea. So when you read in the tafsir, they tell you in Mosul, in Iraq, they have Judea. In Syria, they have Judea. In Turkey, they have Judea, and they call it Krag or Karag, whatever the name. So historians, agreed upon this reality or this fact that the Judea that Allah had mentioned in Turkey. So it's the place where it stopped and they started to come down. And that is the time. That's the only time, I believe. That's the only time that you will have on earth just believers. Just believers. That's the time. SubhanAllah, that's the time you have human beings only believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he started to live after that. How many years did we mention yesterday? 250, 250 mashallah, Rabbil Alameen. And of course, as we said in the Bible, they said 350 years after the ark or after the flood, he stayed 250 years until he died. Where is the grave of Sayyidina Nuh? Does anyone know? Yes, some people. <laughs> yes. In Al Iraq. Yeah. yeah, some people said in Al Musil, in Al Iraq, they had some traces about his grave. But now, my point the Muslim only concentrate on what benefits him. What benefits him? This is what you concentrate. Like, the lesson that you might take from the son, from Sayyidina Nuh and his son, and the guidance only comes from Allah, for me, that's more important than knowing what's the Judea and or where, are, where is the mountain of Judea? What's the benefit might come to you? Like somebody, long discussion when Allah sent Adam to the earth, which place that he came to? Some people said India, right? No, 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 they met. They met on Arafah. Like Adam and, and Eve met on Arafah. But the first spot that Adam came to when Allah sent him, they said India, Kashmir. Huh? Sri Lanka, yes. Yeah, they said in, in India. And some people started to call him. No, he came to our, no, he came to our, he came to, what's the benefit? 
Tourism. That's the case. Tourism. <laughs> What's the case? Like, like you know, in Egypt, we have long debate. Did not stop till today. Is Ramses the second? Ramses yeah. the second. He is the Pharaoh that Allah had mentioned in the Quran, and he was with the story of Musa alayhi salam. Historians said yes. Some people said no, and they brought brought his mummy, and they said, look at his arm. It's broken. It's you know. See, it, that's Subhanallah. What's the benefit? What's the benefit? Allah did not give us the, the Quran so we can think about these things. That's irrelevant. But my, what might change your life? Let's see his arrogance and how Allah destroyed him. That's it. For me, that's the more important lesson. May Allah guide us to the truth. Allahumma ameen. Ya Rabbil Alameen. That is how he struggled with his people. And that is how Allah demolished them. them. And Allah said, فَوَقِيلَ بُعْدًا لِلْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ There is no more oppressors to live this time on earth. Just the believers. He came and Allah started a new life to the, to the, to the human beings and to the animals. They started to spread. And of course, I will give you the answer like that I mentioned yesterday, I mentioned the question and I will give you the answer. Do, we, do you think that all the human beings only came from the three children of Noah? Of course not, of course no. He had believers with him. They were males and the females. They came from the rest of them and not, not every human being came after, just came from those three children. We have even more than this. We, we have people came from the believers who were with Nuh alayhi salam and the, the earth started new beginning, fresh start and lots of lessons we should take and that the believers and the da'wah and the tawheed that will remain. We should be grateful to Allah that he granted us tawheed. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. And do your best in da'wah. You know, sometimes if Allah granted you, if Allah granted you one person, you bring him back to the way of Allah, whether he was a Muslim, but he was a disobedient, a non-practiced Muslim, non-practicing Muslim, then he started to practice. If Allah granted you one person, one person per year, you did in your mission better than what Sayyiduna Nuh did. Do you agree on that? Yes. Yeah. Right? You get one for 800 years. You know, <laughs> 100 years. Yes. For 100 years, you get one. You get one. Yeah. That, that, like, let's say, like every how many years, he gets, he gets one. SubhanAllah. I, that's why I told you, we underestimate ourselves. That's the, that's the reality. Wallahi al -Azim. Do your best. If you, if you spend, that's why the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi he did not talk about one year or two years or 10 years, 100 years. No, he said per age in your life, the whole life. He said, If Allah is going to guide through you, one person, one person per what? Per day? Per year? No, per life. Per life. One person. That will be better than humur al naam Humur al naam that's an expression, means that will be better than the entire dunya and what it contains. That's better than anything else. If Allah guided through you, one person. May Allah grant us goodness. Allahumma ameen ya rabbil alameen. Give you room for the sunnah for Maghrib inshallah. Jazakum Allah khairan. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Quran al-Azim. Wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bima fihi min ayatin wa al-dhikr al-hakim. Hatha wa usalli wa usallimu ala al-mab'uthi rahmatan lil'alameen. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Jazakum Allah khairan. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.